all year long we've been talking about just how special these Baltimore Ravens are and I'm so glad that the world got to witness tonight how special they truly are the Ravens gotta win it all man they got to this team is just they, they, they're too great they are too special not to win it all they, they have to get the job done this year but anyway team keep it clean I am here to share my post game thoughts from the game that we all watched between the Baltimore Ravens and the San Francisco 49ers. And it was a good, excuse me, no, no, no. It was a great game, especially for the Ravens, of course. Uh, they held it down. They got the win. And they took care of business in a major way. Now, before we get into the game, uh, I appreciate y'all for supporting the channel. Make sure you continue to subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on. As of this recording, uh, on December 26th at 12.52 a.m., we are 90 subscribers away from 71,000 subscribers. So I appreciate the fact that y'all been supporting the channel like crazy. Also, make sure you leave a like on the video uh, because it helps out a ton. Uh, so I appreciate y'all. Thank you for everything that you all do. Thank you for being the way that y'all are. I, I love y'all. Now, something else that I love is to put y'all on. If I get put on, I got to put y'all on too. So y'all, check out Heart of the City Clothing. Check them out. For your Play Like a Raven Ray Lewis hoodie, I got the link right down below in the description. So I know a lot of people, had y'all have already ordered your, your Play Like a Raven hoodies. So shout out to y'all. If you want it in white, you can get it in white. If you want it in black, you can get it in black. If you want it in white and black, you can do that. But the bonus, whatever you order from their website to get 20% off, use code ENGRAVEN. I love y'all. Again, the link is right down below in the description. Now, to these Baltimore Ravens. Man, let's 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 start off with the defense, cause the boy that, de oh, that defense is crazy, man. They are crazy. These dudes got one, two, three, four, five interceptions. Five of them. Let me see if I can remember everybody who got a pick. Uh, Kyle Hamilton, super duper Kyle. He is amazing. The guy is he is one of the best players. I mean, you can make a case for him being the best player on this Ravens defense. And your case would be heard and won by a lot of people. But Kyle Hamilton is just amazing. He got two interceptions tonight. Um, and, I mean, both of them were really nice. Uh, one of them was in, in, in the end zone. And then the second one, the second one was crazy because on the second one, I thought he was out of the play completely because the offensive lineman pretty much tackled him, sat on him, laid on him, was just sitting there. And then when that refs threw the flag, the offensive lineman was like, huh, you guys are really throwing a flag on me? And I'm thinking like, yeah, buddy, you see what you're doing to Kyle? So then Kyle was down on the ground. He was down on the ground for like 10 minutes on that play. Then he got up and he saw the ball. He said, wait a minute. I, I got one pick and getting a pick was so nice. You know what? I'm going to do it twice. And went and grabbed it. Oh, amazing. So Kyle Hamilton got to Marlon Humphrey. Because Brandon Stevens, he he had an up and down game today, but he did make enough plays to where it's like, ah, there we go, baby, there we go. Um, and on one of those plays, he had tipped the ball, and it went up in the air. Marlon Humphrey came down with it. He caught it. He caught it. We know Marlon Humphrey. His hands ain't the best, but he got it. So Kyle Hamilton had two. Marlon Humphrey had one. Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen, PQ. Uh, I remember uh, earlier this week or maybe last week, Patrick Queen on Twitter, well, on X, whatever you want to call it, um, somebody put up a highlight of 49ers offense doing something crazy where they were doing all this misdirection and stuff and the offense was going crazy. And Patrick Queen had quote, quote tweeted that and he said something like, and I'm paraphrasing, because I don't remember his exact words, but he said something like, hey, that's, that, that's cute and all, but you, you just got to play football and just hit somebody. Just hit somebody. And Ravens were doing that tonight. And Patrick Queen got a nice interception. Almost thought he fumbled because Trent Williams was like, hey, I got the ball. But Patrick Queen was down. And then, of course, the last interception, the game ceiling interception, the one that officially ended everything, was by one arm Marcus Williams. So that it was just a beautiful thing to see. The Baltimore Ravens defense is insane, man. The fact that they went against Brock Purdy, who had been having an amazing year. There's been a lot of conversations about Brock Purdy this year, but about if he should be the MVP or not. Some people saying, oh, he got all these weapons, and it's the weapons that's doing all the work. Well, I mean, look, the way that I feel about it, what, aren't weapons supposed to make your quarterback's job easier? I think so. They, they sure are. So I, I can't be mad at Brock for getting the ball to his weapons and letting them work. That's what weapons are for, so it takes the pressure off of you. But I think people's argument with Brock Purdy when it came to the MVP was that, oh, it's just the system. 
Somebody else could come in there and do that. Is he really the most valuable player to his team or in the league? That's where the question is at. Um, and then we, we saw who a lot of people feel like is the real 49ers MVP, that being Christian McCaffrey, and he was doing his thing. Uh, there were a lot of plays where Ravens end up stopping him. They end up uh, tackling him in the backfield. But then there was a good amount of plays where Christian McCaffrey, he, he was getting his in. And you got to respect Christian McCaffrey because he is an excellent player, amazing player. I know he had over 100 yards from scrimmage tonight, obviously got uh, the touchdown. But he is just a, a beast. But it wasn't enough. The San Francisco 49ers, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, um, they, they, Trent Williams, amazing offensive lineman. They, um, they just like Kyle Juszczyk, former Baltimore Raven. Hey, pretty familiar with him. But um, they got so many players just really on both sides of the ball. They got an amazing roster. But Baltimore Ravens, they were like, okay, cool. We, we got one too. We got one too. We're we going to show y'all. And they did. They showed the whole world. And it was great to see. Um, their defense in this game, again, Brock Purdy, four interception, Four. Had he stayed in the game, and, and there were almost a couple more that he threw too, but Ravens dropped him. But had he stayed in the game, I was thinking he was going to go for, for like five or six. So, But then he ended up getting hurt real quick. But then uh, he got cleared to come back. But Kyle Shanahan was like, nah, yeah, you sit out of this one, Brock. It's okay. Don't even worry about it. Now, we talked about the, the, the pass defense. We're getting all them interceptions. So, you, you're definitely doing something right when you get on the interceptions. But then uh, the rush defense, the pass rush. Um, let's look at the sacks that the Baltimore Ravens got because they had one, two, three, four of them. Now, I'm going to try to remember them off the top of my head before I look at who got them. I remember Jadavion Clowney had, I think, one and a half. I know Brent Urban had one. So, that's two and a half. Uh, who had the other two? See, now I don't remember. So, going to Old Faithful. Oh, they said Brent Urban had two. Oh, Calvin Noy, yes. Because he got it on the same drive that Jadavian Clowney got it. Oh, they only gave Jadavian Clowney uh, credit for one? Oh, I thought they were going to give him the one and a half. Okay, that's cool. So, they gave Brent Urban two of them. All right, cool. No problem. As long as we getting them. Because, again, a sack, people who say sacks are overrated, wrong. Because sacks, it, they close out the play. They finish the play. The play is over. Well, unless it's a sack and a forced fumble. So it's, it's still good for the defense. But sacks are finishers. Now, unfortunately, um, Justin Matabike, his streak is over. Um, 49ers, they, they said, we get, we, we, we're coming out of here with something. We're going to get some type of win some way, somehow. So they did win that with stopping Matabike from getting at least a half a sack in what would it have been a 12th or 13th straight game, something like that. I forgot what it is, but that streak is now officially over. But the Baltimore Ravens are 12 and 3, so you can keep that streak. It's okay. Um, special teams, Justin Tugger. He hit four field goals. I remember at one point in this game, there were some people saying that, oh, this is going to be one of them Justin Tucker MVP type of games. Uh, and the way that it started, it looked like it could have been, but. Lamar Jackson, Baltimore Ravens MVP, he said no. And let's switch gears to the Baltimore Ravens offense. They started this game off slow. And I know a lot of people were worried, like, oh, man, we're going against the 49ers and that team, that offense, that defense, which is amazing. Oh, we can't afford this. And they, they started off slow. But they, they end up being down five. I know there was the whole, <laughs> it was that, the clip, the trip. There was the, the, the ref gate. Uh, where Lamar was running away from Joey Bosa and company, and he ended up, the ref ended up falling, and he ended up tripping Lamar. Lamar threw it away. Oh, intentional grounding, safety, boom, and hey, two points right there. How about it? Um, but, yeah, uh, other than that, uh, Lamar, he had a couple passes. There was one pass on the first drive where he overthrew it. There was some other passes where he overthrew him too, but that's okay. That's going to happen. And not every single pass is going to be exactly on the money. And you can say that about any quarterback. But what matters is what you did do and what you got done. And Lamar got plenty done tonight. Well, last night because it'll be it's tonight when I'm recording this. But it'll be last night when you're watching this. But anyway, um, Lamar Jackson, just looking at uh, his numbers, he went and numbers don't tell the whole story now. Because if y'all already know. But anyway, he went 23 for 35 for 252 yards, uh, two touchdowns, no interceptions. And there were not even any almost interceptions. Uh, he did get sacked twice, which is unfortunate. But it's okay. Ravens got the win. Um, Baltimore Ravens, my, the most impressive drive to me, it wasn't even a drive where they got a touchdown. 
The most impressive drive to me was when the 49ers, they punted the ball and they pinned the Ravens on like the five yard line, I think. And the Ravens literally went from one end of the field all the way down to the one or two yard line of the 49ers. And they did it without penalties. Now, there was a penalty that was called on the drive. Uh, it was a holding penalty on the defense. So that would have given them five yards. But the Ravens on that play, they had ended up getting the first down anyway. Because Lamar had scrambled and got the first down. But they accepted the penalty because it gave them like a couple more yards. But they didn't need a penalty to move the ball. Again, 90-something yards on the San Francisco 49ers defense. Like when I saw that, I said, wow. Something else about this game too. Let me ask you a question and answer it in the comment section. Please do. Um, do you think the Baltimore Ravens in this game, they played their best offense of the year? Or do you think that this game was one of their best offensive performances of this year? Now, me, I, I would say no. and Because I saw the Baltimore Ravens, they just started off slow. Uh, and then they didn't close it out all the way on offense like we hoped they would have. Now, they, again, they got enough points, especially in that third quarter. I think they scored 17 in the third quarter, which was great. And that was enough. But I wish they could have closed it out even better um, and just really just ended everything. But even with the Baltimore Ravens not playing their best offense, even though the Baltimore Ravens left a lot of points out there on the field, and again, we got to, they, and they were going up against a really good San Francisco 49ers defense, so got to give them their credit. But they still scored 33 points. Still. With all those factors, they still put up 33 points. That says so much about this football team to me. That says a whole lot about them. And that lets me know, like, they, again, Lamar, he said it. They don't want to peak too early. This offense, they certainly ain't peaked. The defense, I mean, the defense, I think the defense could be peaking. They've been peaking the whole year. But the offense certainly hasn't peaked yet. But the fact that they haven't peaked yet, and they're not even close to peaking, but they still put up 33 points on the San Francisco 49ers defense, that says a whole lot about who these Baltimore Ravens are and what they're capable of. And I love the fact that they haven't peaked, but they're 12 and 3. They're 12 and 3. And that says a lot about them. Uh, these Baltimore Ravens, um, then the, we talked about the passing game a bit. We saw uh, this was a big game for Zay Flowers. There were so many targets coming his way. Uh, his numbers, he had uh, nine catches for 72 yards and, of course, had his touchdown catch, which was beautiful to see. Uh, and a nice little celebration, too. Um, and then Nelson Aguilar, he had a touchdown catch as well. And I, and I love how Nelson Aguilar just, he beat, I think it was number 22 on the 49ers defense. He just beat him from jump on the route, but he, he stayed with it and came back to the ball, made sure Lamar had an easy target for him. And Lamar got it to him. He, he finished it, and it was a beautiful thing uh, to watch. Isaiah Likely, uh, I think he had like three catches, but he had that big, that, that long catch uh, where he got a lot of yak. Uh, he was running up that field. Gus Edwards had one catch for 39 yards, and his was a lot of yak. And on, on that play, it's like Lamar, I thought Lamar was going to run. Lamar baited the defense, uh, and, and they, they thought he was going to run. So they started caving in on him, and Lamar looked like he was going to run, but then shoo, Toss it to Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards, he did the rest and got out field. Justice Hill, he had a couple of catches. Um, Rashad Bateman had one catch. Charlie Kohler had one catch. Odell Beckham Jr. had two catches. And Nelson Aguilar, he had three. Oh, uh, my favorite Nelson Aguilar play. Uh, well, not my favorite play, but it was a good play. Um, by, minus the touchdown, obviously. But it was a play from Lamar Jackson where – it's a quick decision. And I saw people say, oh, Odell Beckham Jr. was open. Um, likely was open. Or Zay Flowers or somebody else was open. But the 49ers had blitz. They had blitz, and Lamar had a defender in his face in like a second, maybe a second and a half. Uh, so his hot read was Nelson Aguilar, and he got that ball to him just like that. He got it to him under pressure, great pass, uh, and obviously he was hopeful that Nelson Aguilar would probably make the defender miss or break a tackle or whatnot. It didn't happen. The defender just made an excellent tackle on Nelson Aguilar. But um, just plays like that and just, just continuing to see Lamar's continued development. Even if you look at the games, uh, if you look at games from early this year to games late this year, you can see the progress in Lamar Jackson. You can see him throwing the ball away. You can see him getting rid of the ball a lot quicker. You can see him taking less sacks. You can see him just living to play another down. And he is playing some excellent, excellent, excellent football. Again, numbers don't tell the whole story. I think it's very important that – to really appreciate who Lamar Jackson is and to really appreciate his game, you have to watch it. You have to. 
You have to see his ability. You have to see what he escapes. You have to see what he gets out of. You have to see what he makes out of nothing to really appreciate who he is. If you don't watch, then you'll never know. With the Baltimore Ravens run game, Lamar Jackson has seven carries for 45 yards. Almost had a touchdown, but uh, he got stopped right at the one-yard line. Um, and then with and on that stop, after that stop, I thought the Baltimore Ravens were going to go for it. Um, I, I really did, but they, they kicked the field goal. Um, on another time when I thought they weren't going to go for it, and I was saying, oh, kick a field goal, take your points. They went for it, and they got it. And it was just such a, a great no-nonsense play from the Ravens. I thought on the fourth down where they gave it to Gus Edwards, I thought they were going to do like play action. I thought they were going to do some misdirection. I thought they were, they didn't do none of that. They just said, Gus, you just run straight up. Go get it. And he went and got it, and they made it happen. I was like, okay, Ravens, I love it. This game was very special um, <laughs> because this was a game where the Baltimore Ravens, a lot of people looked at them as the inferior team to the 49ers. Um, and that's okay. Everybody got their own opinions. Uh, but the Ravens, they handle business. Uh, this was such a special game for Mike McDonald. And you could tell it was special for him. Um, he, he was so proud of his guys, as he should be. And they should be proud of him. Um, and you saw how he, because we never seen him like that before. He'd been like, excited for some games before. But we used to usually see him on the sideline just for this smirk. Just, just, just smiling like that. Just chilling. Very, like, chill, relaxed. But this game, he was like, yeah. When, when Marcus Williams got that game ceiling interception, oh, he was hyped, man. He was hyped. Baltimore Ravens, keep him there. Don't let Mike McDonald go, please. But we'll continue to have that conversation later. I, I, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, for Todd Munkin, this was a huge game for him. Again, going against a great team, a great defense, they got it done. They got it done. Um, John Harbaugh, uh, I wonder if the challenge, great great job overall tonight, but I wonder if the challenge that he threw to tonight, because it was, it was on the fourth down with Debo Sammy, he got the fourth down. It was, it was clearly, he clearly passed the first down marker. Um, but I wonder if that was another one of those John Harbaugh challenges where he's like, oh, yeah, I, I just wanted my defense to get a little rest. I wanted them to get a little rest so they could be more prepared. Um, but who knows? Now, um, on the 49ers' last drive of the game, yeah, I believe it was their last drive, uh, they got all the way down to the two-yard line. Um, they tried to punch it in, uh, or they ran a play action. Oh, Ravens defense. I got to go back to Ravens defense this game. Throughout different times this game, you know San Francisco 49ers, they run all this misdirection stuff. They got guys going in motion, left, right, up, there, everywhere. Ravens defense this game was extremely disciplined, and I really, really appreciated that about them. Because you have to, going against a team like this, you have to be. Because, again, with Brock Purdy, he's a quarterback that, like, he, he usually takes care of the ball. And he'll get it to his playmakers. he say, hey, y'all y'all take this. Y'all go do the work. But in this game, Ravens were playing some sound, disciplined football. Um, they were tackling well. They were not, well, still sometimes they were giving up some yak. But overall, they tackled well. Uh, they were not being confused. They were not getting faked out. They knew where the ball was. They, they knew where it wasn't. They, they took care of business, and I really love seeing that from them because that was important. That was, that was super important uh, in this game, and they got it done. Now, um, but, yeah, back to that, the, the, the San Francisco 49ers, their last drive, where they got it all the way to the two-yard line. Um, they did a play action, I think, on the first play. Incomplete. Ravens were, again, disciplined football. They tried to run it in with Christian McCaffrey on the second down. Nope. They got stopped, which I was like, oh, my goodness. But on third down, I was so surprised. But I was appreciative, but I was so surprised because they they went in a shotgun. I said, what? They, they going in a shotgun? Are they crazy? And then they end up, Ravens end up getting the sack. And that all oh, that changed everything. I was like, yes. And then on the next play, uh, Marcus Williams ended up catching the pick. And that, of course, closed it out. So that, it, this was just a, a beautiful game, a great game. And we just hope that the Baltimore Ravens continue this for the rest of the regular and postseason and all the way to getting a Lombardi trophy, getting number three. They got everything that they need and more to do it. They have the ability. They got the team. They got the players. They got the scheme. They, and again, they haven't even peaked yet. So the, everything's in front of them. And again, this could possibly, like, think, think about it again. This, this game could possibly be the Baltimore Ravens' last away game. Their last away game till the Super Bowl. 